by all. As you can see from the picture here, I've got um, a bit of an unboxing video to do. I don't normally do unboxing videos. First of all, I'll have to thank my wife for picking this gun up for me this morning. Um, during this COVID-19 pandemic, um, it hasn't affected my work. I've been at work every day. I haven't missed a day's work and the wife's been working from home. So I found up Solware in Tamworth, which is roughly about 18 miles away from where I live. After watching a few reviews on this particular budget gun, um, they happened to have one in. I thought it was a 177, um, but it isn't. It's a, it is actually what I ended up with is a 2.2, because when the wife phoned up this morning before leaving to pick it up for me, um, she says, no, no, we've got no 177s left. We've only got a 2.2. Two, two. We've only got one. So I says... Um, now we'll make a change, I haven't got any 2.2s, I haven't had any 2.2 uh, .22 calibre air rifles for oh, 30 years I bet. Um, I had a big gap in me shooting of air rifles, I used to go out with a friend and uh, wander around the canals, not causing any problems with anybody, never got into any trouble, we used to have more of a laugh and a joke than um, serious shooting, we never, we never really shot anything or what we shot we probably missed. If that makes any sense, what we aimed at, nine times out of ten we missed. But I guess 28 years ago I had an SMK, I think it was a DB5. I'm sure it was a DB5 and it was an underlever. It was a bit rough and ready. Uh, the stock on it, it looked like it had been painted with brown shiny paint as opposed to a nice grain and, and lacquer. But nevertheless, it never let me down. It's quite powerful. I'm not sure what feet pounds it was doing. It should have been doing the legal limit. But, um, yeah, we had some fun. So, I've been browsing the internet. And I've come across this gun quite a few times. Um, apparently, the retail recommended price is, is roughly about £155. I watched somebody called Roy Keeling, who, who has a, a channel on YouTube. And he's done quite a few reviews on um, uh, Chinese rifles and he rates them. Uh, despite, I don't think he's put a video up now for a year. But yeah, check, check his channel out. Roy Keeling. Seems like a nice guy. But he, he's, when, he, when he reviewed this gun he says it's got a Walther barrel. Now I can only guess there's a guy who I watch and quite like his videos also called Big Dan's Air Guns. Now, he's the one what says this gun is fitted with a Walther barrel. Now, I'm, I'm just putting two and two together. I may be, I may be wrong, but uh, Roy Keeling says it's got a Walther barrel. So I can only presume he saw Big Dan's review. Uh, and he's heard it off his review that it's fitted with a Walther barrel. So last night, I don't just normally go out and buy something. I do a bit of research and a bit of studying. Sorry to waffle on. I will open the box in a moment. Um... Yeah, so I do a bit of research, watch, watch a few videos. This gun is actually called something else in America. I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember what it what it's called in America. But it's got a different name. But obviously SMK are the ones who import it. Uh, I don't know if they do any modifications or what, what their role is apart from importing the gun and selling it here because it's obviously a Chinese gun. But um, I got it for £179. 99 so 180 pounds from Solware. I say I got it, the wife got it, she went and picked it up for me, so I appreciate that. So, thumbs up to the wife, thank you. Uh, no doubt, see, I'll, I'll have to pay dividends back and do a load of jobs around the house, but nothing new there. Um, yeah, so I watched a few reviews and it got fairly good reviews. And last night, I spent about an hour. Um, surfing the surfing the web, looking for any information regarding this Walther Walther barrel that uh, Big Dan's Air Guns claims they had, and I can only presume that Roy Keeling had saw his uh, review and um, decided to get on the bandwagon. Now I went on forums, I went on the official SMK importer's site, I downloaded a brochure, and nowhere nowhere could I find any information what says fitted with a Walther barrel. So, take it from me, this gun is not fitted with a Walther barrel. And if you know any different, please leave it in the comments. So that's my little rant out of the way. Um, 
I've already opened this box, so I won't try and kid you and be a total liar. When the wife got back, I had 15 minutes to spare before I left for work myself the, the, this morning. So I basically opened it, looked at the gun, because I, obviously I hadn't seen any pictures or anything of it, of this actual gun. And um, so, so I bought it blind. Um, normally I like to go in a shop and um, at least look at something before I buy it, but that's not the way this happened. So the wife brought it home, I opened the box and I took it out, took the gun out of the cellophane, took the polystyrene end caps off, I brought it into my man cave um, and the, in the internals where you put your pellet were absolutely smothered in um, like an orangey coloured oily grease. It, it was sort of dripping. Now I've got, that's not a complaint by the way, I'm just saying all the insides of the uh, where you, where you put your pellet in, the, the, the little, I don't know the technical, is it the breech? It was all smothered in this orangey gooey stuff. Which I couldn't understand because they're made in China, they've got to travel across the sea in containers and uh, then in, go in storage till they're sold. So they don't want their product going rusty. So, I, you know, you can appreciate what they do to try and tackle that. But anyway, I've gassed on for long enough. Hopefully, oh and thank you to all my subscribers, new ones and uh, long-standing ones. I appreciate your uh, your input and your comments. Now I'm not going to be so boring as to I'm just I'm just roughly loosely showing you showing you what's in this book. Little diagram there, look, which will come handy in the future if you had to uh, replace the spring, I guess. I wrote down the date when I got it on the back of the book for my reference and the price, £180, sold where? 15th of the 720th, that's today. Right, now when I opened this box I got a, quite a nice surprise. Because that wood there, I expected to be a light colour and look a bit cheapish if I'm honest. Um, that was my... Uh, that was what I perceived, it was going to be like a light beach colour. Um, and probably look a bit cheap and tacky but to my amazement there's the gun it was in this cellophane and then it, on the end of each side of the gun was a piece of polystyrene so I've already had it out of the box I cleaned I'll show you I'll show you it better in a minute when I get it on the rifle rest but um, I copped it and inside there below that cover there all the insides of that was like orangey brown coloured sort of oily sort of stuff to stop it going rusty but um, the actual quality of this this stock and the gun uh, beggars believe you'd have to you'd have to see it in the flesh I don't know if my camera will do it any justice but you'd have to see it in the flesh to appreciate how nice the wood looks it really is lovely it really is I'm, I'm astonished and amazed and the gun is blooming heavy uh, which won't affect me because I'll, I'll only ever shoot it in a, a bench rest position. I've got the logo there, look. Sports Marketing XS38. I presume the one is the Mark 1, calibre 22, 5.5. And also, <laughs> I laugh to myself because I've been that used to handling 177 pellets. And I've got tins and tins and tins of things. I've got about 10 tins in front of me. Couldn't believe how heavy... A full tin of two two pellets was. Wow. For bloody hell, that feels that feels heavy. A tin of pellets, because I'm used to uh, dealing with one seven seven stuff, not two two. So that's that's basically a quick look at the gun. In a moment, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be savage with my um, my Webley, and I'm going to uh, steal the sight off it. I have also made another video that I've not yet uploaded regarding a sight that I recently bought, but I've still got editing to do on that video. So that's the gun, it's got the S SMK logo there, I don't know if that's some kind of a transfer, it feels like it's not a sticker, that's for sure. So that shouldn't come off uh, any time soon, it's got the Dayglow sights. Um, I'll show you a better look at the gun. But I just thought I'd show you it in its box that, you, that you'd get it in if you bought it brand new. And it's got most of the info on here that you've been staring at for while I've been gassing on. £8.6. 44.8 inches cocking effort 28 pounds I don't know if you can see this with the reflecting light type single shot under lever action air rifle sequence compression 
power source, sequence, why don't it say spring, sequence compression, ammunition, lead air gun pellet 177 stroke, blah blah blah, 2 2, velocity up to 1000 feet per second in 177, 850 feet per second. trigger pull 3.3 to 5.5 pounds. So that basically is uh, is your main information. Luckily, it's, it was wrote down for me because otherwise I wouldn't remember it all with my uh, the way my brain works. Right, let's get the let's get the gun on a gun rest and um, we can have sort of a closer look at the top of it. The uh, forward facing or front Daglo sights. To cock this gun, you slide that back towards yourself, that piece there, which is sort of like a tough plastic. Um, you slide that back a little, few millimetres and then, then the under lever comes down so you can cock it. But the blue end's quite good on it. It's got loads of uh, my greasy handprints on it at the moment. But uh, yeah, the blue end's very nice. There's your rear sights, fully adjustable, you know, both ways. With the day glow sights again. Um, I took two shots with the gun and I don't expect this to be very accurate at all because no doubt some people uh, they have a good practice when they buy a new gun of cleaning the barrel. I've got nothing, um, I've got no materials for cleaning a barrel. What I normally do when I get a gun is probably not the right thing. I just shoot, I just shoot a few pellets through it and that sort of cleans it up. That's my, uh, and then if there's a problem in the future with accuracy Obviously the barrel will, will need cleaning, but I shall put, I shall put some oil on that, um, smear some oil in it before I put the sight on, which is the next thing I'm going to do, and then we'll see it shooting. I don't expect, like I say, I don't expect it to be accurate because I would imagine that the bore's going to be full of uh, full of oil and contaminated. But um, that's the right hand side. Let's have a look at the left. The left side of the gun. And it, it's, it appears to be a little bit front heavy, which is probably not a bad thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a video regarding the artillery hold. I don't do the artillery hold. It doesn't work for me. And I've got my ideas probably why. People swear by it. And I've heard that many, and I've seen that many videos and hear people say, oh, you want the artillery, artillery hold? It's a spring gun. It does nothing for my accuracy. So I've, I've got my own little technique, which is a wrong one, but it works for me. I never checked, actually, talking of which, whether this is an amp ampidextrous stock. Uh, no, it isn't. It comes out slightly, only slightly, on this side. So it is made for a right-handed a right uh, handed shooter, which I'm not. I'm left-handed, but uh, it'll be okay. And there we have it. I'm astonished at that wood and the way the grain is and uh, the quality of it for something what only costs £180. Yeah, it's not that inferior to my Virart which was double the price of this and that's the cheapest one that Virart probably make in their range. So there you have it, there's the, uh, the Dovetail 11mm um, mounting system with the arrestor plate for your, for your sights, stops them coming back off. This here is the anti-bear trap, so when you've cocked the gun and, and the breech is open, when your thumb's in there, that, that is, uh, you have to push that, push that lever forwards to enable you to uh, pull the under lever back up after you've cocked it, after you've tensioned it to save you losing your thumb while it's in there. But we'll, we'll go into that when I start shooting it. So now my next job is, I'm going to put some telescopic sights on. Perfect. Perfect. Well, that feels like some heavy old gun. Oh, where's 
Sri Bhavan. That's where the balance point is. There. That's where it's balanced. Job done. Oh. Now let's do some shooting. Go and get my pellets. Well, as you can see, my sights are now fitted. I've got a zero them in, so I'm hoping I don't totally miss my target box because uh, it wouldn't be good to shoot the fence. There is trees behind it, but. Um, there you go. Hopefully, they, they, I've done them up nice and tight, so hopefully they're not going to creep too much. And I'm hoping they're not going to be miles miles off target. I'll basically put a piece of paper up on my box. I'll try and zoom in steady. One, two, three, five. Is it one, two, three, or four? One, three, five. Five dots with a pen I've put on there. And I'll use the middle one, I'll aim for the middle and then I'll try and uh, adjust the sights and get it bang on and then start shooting another one now. I don't expect it to be very accurate at first because the, the barrel's going to be full of gunk. And the pellets that I, my wife was given by the manager of Solware were these, these pellets. I've never heard of them, dome spitfires, but that's the only tin of pellets that I own. Um, on the first 50, 70, 80 pellets, probably 100, whatever, is to bed is just used to bed the gun in. It's new spring, everything's brand new, it's all got a bed in. So, um, yeah, so I don't expect that they'll be too accurate. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not expecting miracles here, to be fair, till I've shot at least probably 70 or 80 um, pellets through it. And chances are, the gun probably won't like those pellets anyway. And as I've learnt, pellet choice to a certain gun uh, is everything towards accuracy. So, as normal, I will. I fired two shots out of this gun with open sight. So this this first shot I'm going to do in a moment will be its third ever shot since since I've owned the gun this morning. But as normal, I'll put the camera on the tripod, aim it at that sight down there, and see what happens. Um, all being well. Well, let's get rolling. It's a bit easier to cock than my vire up, this is, that's for sure. That come on the cord, yes. Oh, it was all kitted up. Not that easy to drop these pellets, they're massive. There it goes. Go in the barrel. Pull it back up. Oh yeah, pull that. Close that. I'll have to get used to this procedure on this gun. I'm used to shooting the brake barrel. Right, take the safety off. We're all we're all ready for action, ready to fire. Right, this is my first ever shot. The third shot that this gun's done, but my first ever shot with a telescopic. And then I'm going to have to uh, adjust them, no doubt. I'm aiming at the middle target, is where I'm aiming. Oh, blimey. See where that went. Oh, it's time to do some serious adjustments here. So we need to go up, which is the top one. Right. That won't go any more than that, I don't believe. It's full up, which is not good. And to the left. Let's see what happens. Could be eating problems with this. I might have to uh, build the sights up.
shot number two. Take the safety off. See where this one goes. That looks. I don't know. That's good. Down and roll. This is this is all guesswork now. Down. Right. Let's see what happens with this one. This is the third shot. <laughs> right, it's safety off. Aim at the middle. In fact, I'm going to aim at the bottom one on here. Bottom one. No further, I think. Got to come down more and slightly to the right. No, that's to the right, now down. See what happens on that one. Hopefully, I'll be somewhere near it now. If this gun, obviously, the barrel's got to clear itself. Seems weird being easy to cock, having a 2-2, and having slightly less recoil than a 177. I cut my teeth on these guns years ago. Right then. Bottom one again. Still wants to come down by the look of it. I think this is going to be one of them awkward ones to set up. I'm not doing it the normal way that I uh, set guns up. I normally just look, look through the sight and uh, do it the easy way, but I tried that one and it didn't work. Right. Bottom one again. Yeah, that's it, it's come down, it wants to go up and to the left. So, I don't know how consistent it's going to be, that's the problem. Is it going to be consistent? Oh, that's up, slightly to the left. All right. There we go, safety off. Aiming at the bottom one again. I think that went high into the right, I think. 